Hello, me bros. This is Jason of Gamer and Shocks, and here is my original Xbox. It's really messy, I know, but you're not going to be staring at it for that long because I'm going to be doing a collection video. Now, let's see. My history on the original Xbox is that I got it in 2015, I think. And it was it's basically me and my brothers, but my brother never plays it. So, it's basically mine pretty much. So, yeah, here's my original Xbox. I have three controllers. I have two black ones. Right here, a blue one with a memory card in it, which who actually ever used these? Because the Xbox has a hard drive. And I have the DVD uh, playback stuff, in case everyone want to watch DVDs, because I don't have a PlayStation 2 down here. But yeah, I think the Xbox is my favorite sixth generation console. Yeah, I like it more than the GameCube, which I have right next to me. And the PS2. I, I I think I like the PS2 more than the GameCube, to be honest. And I, I don't have a Dreamcast, so I can't get my thoughts on the Dreamcast. So, where's that collection that I was talking about? It is down here. These are all of my original Xbox games. I have, a, I have 78 original Xbox games. I have 80, but two of them are duplicates. And yeah. It's going to be a long video, I can tell you that. But anyway, so now, let's start. And now, let's begin. So, for my original Xbox games, um, I'm going to be going through every individual pile. They're not, they're not in alphabetical order, I can tell you that. And, yeah, we'll just go from there. So, starting with the first game is a the, the Xbox franchise, period. Halo Combat Evolved. I mean, I don't need to say anything about this game. I I don't. I don't need to say anything about this game at all. This game speaks for itself, but I have not played this game. I know, I am committing a a cardinal sin right now for not playing that game. But I am not committing a cardinal sin with Halo 2 because I have played this game, but with, with the original Xbox, every original Xbox player pretty much has this game. Okay, maybe not everyone, but I'm sure a good majority of original Xbox people like myself have this game. I mean, I've only played one mission in the, uh, in the game, and I played a co-op, and co-op's really fun, but I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I like playing um, uh, single-player and shooters. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Alright, next, Far Cry Instincts. I haven't played this game at all, so I can't give my opinions on my opinion on it. So, but it started the Far Cry games on consoles. That's cool. Alright, and then next is Fable the Lost Chapters, which is another essential original Xbox game, which again, I have not played. I mean I saw a very tiny amount of gameplay, but Nothing, but I, I haven't played the game for myself yet, so I haven't played the game. But for the for every choice, a consequence. That's a cool idea, like good and evil in a RPG. That's that's cool. I don't know how it work how it works, but hey. All right, now we're moving into the games that aren't as essential, like a lot of the games that I would get personally, because the original Xbox is really it was really cheap to get, and it's a cheap console to collect for. I mean, there's some rare games that I don't have, like Jurassic Park, Operation Genesis, and uh, Stubbs the Zombie, and Rebel Without a Pulse. But eventually I want to get those games if I can get them for a good price. Alright, then next is The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. Which, this is a really messed up copy. <laughs> you can see, like, like uh, was it sticker, residue, markers? Because this, this originally wasn't my copy, I got this from a friend. And I've still I still have yet to play this game. Judging from the back, it looks like some sort of adventure game in the Lord of the Rings universe because you get to join the join the quest to destroy the one ring, just like in the movie. Except that that didn't happen until Return of the King. Alright, and then next another essential original Xbox game, Crimson Skies, High Road to Revenge. Now I have played a little bit of this game. It's basically um a flying game with an alternate universe 1930s because you got this guy right here with dashing heroes dangerous dames and deadly dogfights because 
you're in the sky, and you got planes. Alternate World War II with the future. But to be honest, but to be honest, I haven't really played much of the game itself. There's a demo of Voodoo Vince on the on the disc, which I don't have Voodoo Vince in my collection, but I really like that game. It's just I need to find it for a good price. And and start and then what are the uh, I can't speak. It's gonna be this. This is gonna be the start of um, the Burger King games. I have I have all three of them. So the first one is Pocket Bike Racer, and I again I haven't played this game, but judging from the back, it looks like a racing game. Even from the car, even from the title, Pocket Bike Racer. See the excitement of power bike racing without the lower back pain. Already, I'm starting to feel lower back pain. Ha! <laughs> Sorry. And, and look at that. Uh, it includes Xbox 360 and original Xbox versions. On the same disc. That's how it is for all the Burger King games, in case you're wondering. But I haven't played that one, so... Can't give my thoughts on it. I don't know how it works. And then next is... Sonic Hero! Stop! Stop singing! Yes, yeah, Sonic's Xbox debut. Sonic Heroes. Wow, this is, I mean, it's a de it's a good game. I mean, it has some problems, like, uh, what's it, the game is a, is glitchy at times, because I've, I've died from seemingly, at seemingly random, and the game kind of just, kind of, I'm going to say, like, plummets down in, in quality, but the game uh, gets a, has a lot of bottomless pits, probably, I, I think, after... Probably at Casino Park, which is the fifth level in the game. And yeah, but even still, this game's pretty pretty cool because you get to join the team with Team Sonic, Team Dark, Team Chaotix, and Team Rose. Twelve characters, even though they seem pretty similar. And then what's weird about this game is that uh, was it? I have the black label copy of this game, but the disc is platinum hits, platinum family hits. My bad. Yeah, if you were to start with us with um a son with the Sonic game, I wouldn't recommend that one. I'd recommend starting with probably Sonic Colors or Son or um, maybe Generations because I haven't played Generations yet. All right, the next is Azuric Rise of Parathea, which was like a launch window type of original Xbox game because the game didn't the game come out came out a little bit after the original Xbox came out in. What does it say? 2001. But if I get, what I'm getting from the cover is the game looks like Avatar. But I've played a bit of the game. It's a... I guess a platformer RPG, sort of. And it's a platformer with magic. Because you're an apprentice without a master, as it says, as it says up there. Because you get to master the elements, and you get to do some stuff. I mean, I haven't gotten that far in the game, so, uh, don't have the, uh, how was it, the, the most amount of experience with, compared to some of these other Xbox games, but it's not that, it's, it's a, it's a good game. Alright, and then next is Project Gotham Racing, and Project Gotham Racing 2. Now, I haven't gotten into the Project Gotham Racing games yet, it was a PGR, uh, but from what I can gather from this series is that it used to be like the original Forza, or uh, I guess a Gran Turismo competitor, or like the Gran Turismo killer or something like that, I, I don't know. And I don't have a... And if you can tell right here, I have the Platinum Hits version for the original. I don't really like collecting Platinum Hits games because... They really look ugly on a shelf, but I, I only have uh, was it two two platinum hits. Actually, the, well, Fable and and Halo are my brothers. So, but Project Gotham Racing is mine. Um, and you want to see what I did? What happened to the disc? This is what happened to the disc. There was a sticker on the disc. Okay, I wanted to get it off, and I didn't know it was gonna peel off the artwork. My bad. But I think, but judging from Project Gotham Racing 2 is probably a better game since, you know, it's a sequel. 
and to improve on the original because that's what the Gran Turismo games probably be. I can't speak probably do but I don't know I need to, I need to give those games a shot that's gonna be a running theme theme throughout this video I, like I have a huge backlog of original Xbox games that I need to try out all right the next Major League Baseball 2K5 I got from a, from a friend and who cares and Outlaw, Outlaw Golf, which if you just think I'm just going to go who cares and, uh, and then just throw it off to the side. It's actually more more than that because, because it's like I said, it's called Outlaw Golf. You got these guys right here who are probably outlaws. And then what else is, is that Steve Carell is the commentator on the game. Uh, it was Grew from Despicable Me and the 40-year-old virgin. Or that guy from Foxcatcher. I don't know, I haven't seen Foxcatcher. But yeah, great golf, bad attitude. I'm guessing from the game is that if you suck at swinging your, your club and not don't get a good distance, uh, you get angry and maybe you, you um, what's it, make more powerful swings? Because that that's a cool mechanic. I haven't played the game, I think I've only played like just once just to try the game out, but so far it seems like an interesting concept for a golf game. Like, if you like, want to try something else other than Mario Golf, go ahead. Alright, and then next is Doom 3. I uh, haven't had time had the time to play this game, but... Judge it from the back, since there's a quote saying, One of the scariest games ever made. Uh, I, I don't think... I don't think so, but... But... I don't know. I haven't played the game, so... Can't give my opinion on that. Alright, the next is AMF Bowling 2004, which is probably one of the weakest games in my collection because it's just a generic bowling game with not much because of these guys. Mud Duck. And look at it down there. Zenimax. If the camera could focus. There we go. Zenimax. That means Bethesda was involved in this game. How great. I'm guessing when Bethesda was working on Morrowind, they did this hired Mud Duck to say, hey, Make a bowling game for casual Xbox players like myself and uh, probably millions of other people. And uh, the game's not that great. There's a there's better bowling games out there. Like the Wii Sports Bowling is better, and um, there's a game called Strike Force Bowling which is better because it has better mode. This is definitely not this is definitely not like Friday Night at the Lanes because these guys look too happy for that, especially this guy. He's like, hey, 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 I didn't, I got a gutter ball. And yeah, I, I wouldn't say it sucks, but, but, um, I, um, the controls really aren't that great. Like, trying to toss your ball. And then next is Battlefield 2 Modern Combat. This game, I got a yard sale for a dollar, and that was a really good deal. I can tell you that. Don't worry, there's going to be a bunch of other games that I got for a dollar at that same yard sale. But Battlefield 2, this is my introduction to the Battlefield games. Oh boy. If I was to get another Battlefield game, I would probably get Battlefield 1. Because I like, cause World War 1 just sounds like an amazing idea. And this, this was before EA wanted, went, wanted to screw, screw us over. Oh wait, they've always wanted to screw us over. Okay, maybe not always, but but the game looks cool because you got tanks shooting at helicopters and dune buggies in the mo in modern times. Like, oh my god! And there's an Xbox Live trial in the game that's not even in the game, but I haven't played the game, so I want I want I want to blow up those dune buggies and those choppers. Uh, World Championship Poker, another game that I got from a friend. Who cares? Pinball Hall of Fame, the Gottlieb Collection. Now, this game I'm nostalgic for. Not not for the original Xbox version. I originally had this game on the PS2 as a kid, but then the disc stopped working. So I found this Xbox version, and then I found another PlayStation 2 version that works. So I had this Xbox version, and... It's as great as I remember it being. I mean, it's not the most ac probably not the most accurate representation of pinball because I'm no pinball enthusiast. I can tell you that. 
But if you're interested in Gottlieb pinball tables, um, here are the ones that, that the game has, if the camera could focus. There we go. Uh, Ace High, Central Park, Big Shot, Genie, Black Hole, Victory, and Teed Off. Out of, out of those ones, my favorites are um, Black Hole and Genie. I don't know. Maybe it's because of space! 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 For Black Hole and I don't know what for Genie. Maybe because of the, the table design. I don't know. But you should try this out if you're into pinball like I am. Uh, next is Brute Force. This game is a uh, squad-based shooter that's like Ghost Recon. And I, I actually prefer this over Ghost Recon because this is like um, Baby's first go Ghost Recon, I guess. Or like squad-based shooter. Because the game is actually pretty easy to, um, I guess, to understand because... I don't know, maybe the control, cause maybe it's because missions are simpler. I don't know, I can't really explain it that well. Like, if you were, if you were ever wanted to get into, um, I was a, like, squad-based shooters, like, Ghost Recon, or, to some extent, Mass Effect, you should try this game out. I mean, and don't get, don't do it for a story, because story is not the best thing in the world, but, hey. Uh, then next is... Chronicles of Riddick, Escape from Butcher Bay, with Vin Diesel on the cover. Oh, well, oh boy. But, you know what's weird about this game? People actually say that this is one of the best licensed games. Like, whoa! Like, that just, that just says right there, like, yeah, this is a good game. Because you got Vin Diesel on the cover, who has Riddick. And then, like, uh, here you got Vin Diesel's likeness and voiceover with Riddick. And, ju and judging from the back of the game, it looks like a stealth game. With Vin Diesel voicing in his way through the game for you. Now, that's cool. That is cool. I want to try the game out because I've heard that this is one of the best original Xbox games. And it seems like a cool game. Are you just escaping uh, the jail, which I think it said on the back, but I could be wrong. Alright, and then next is Mojo. Now, this game is basically like the, um, what was it? Uh, Marble Madness on the NES, and I think the Genesis. So, I I don't know how exactly Marble Madness plays, because I, didn't, I don't have an NES or a Genesis. Actually, I do have a Genesis, but I have a, one of those plug-and-play Genesis. Genesi, or however you say it in plural. Mojo, um, like, if you don't have, um, the NES or the Genesis, like, the NES, if you don't have the NES like I do, you can try this game out. It's, uh, a good little puzzle game. We have to collect Mojo, but just keep it away from Watch Mojo. Ha 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 No. Uh, what else? Anything else that's special in the game? Uh, some multiplayer stuff. But, ooh, a mini golf mode. I, I did not realize that. I should go back and try to try that mode out, but it's probably just in the multiplayer because I'm a sucker for mini golf. And then next, Arctic Thunder, which is by Midway. That's cool. Usually Midway puts on some pretty good stuff. Well, at least when they were around. Rest in peace, Midway. Yeah, Arctic Thunder. It looks like a racing game, but with snowmobiles and missiles. Cause look at this guy. He look. He's having fun. I mean, look at him. Look at him go. He's having fun. And this guy is probably taking the race too seriously. But Arctic Thunder. Let's see. Um, the ultimate battle on snow. Like, look at that again. Ultimate battles. So let's see. Does it say anything about the game? About atomic snowballs. That's okay. 19 characters, standard stuff. Say anything, okay, it's probably, it probably is a racing game. And I think another thing is that this was one of the launch titles for the original Xbox. If I, if I'm, I th which I think that's true, but I could be wrong. All right, the next is Star Wars Starfighter Special Edition. And Star Wars Jedi Starfighter. Yeah, I just decided to put the, the Starfighter game since they're pretty much the same game. Uh, Starfighter Special Edition, I have beaten this game. You know, 
Uh, don't expect that. I don't. I haven't beaten a lot of my original Xbox games because again, I have a huge backlog of of games. But Starfighter, um, just looking at the cover, it's one of my probably the my my favorite out of the cover arts for the original Xbox. I mean, it's the special edition. I mean, I don't I don't really care for the PS2 version, like the in terms of cover art. But gameplay, I haven't played the PS2 version, so I got the Xbox version because my PS2 version did didn't work. Cause you got it says right here includes new two player modes, bonus missions, and enhanced graphics. Just cross this off because that that doesn't matter. The bonus missions and two player modes that's what matters. And then Jedi Starfighter, um, well you got a Starfighter. I think it's Obi Wan's from Episode Two. It says that it uses the um, the ships from Episode Two. And then there's Mace Windu and Count Dooku. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really have anything to say about Jedi Starfighter, but Starfighter. Um. Um. What to say about Starfighter? Um. It's a good flying game, but um. If you're if you're gonna try going for the last level, <laughs> don't. Just just enter into cheat code because that's kind of what I did. I mean, I I beat the level, but cheat code so I get unlock everything. And right, the next is sneakers. Which is a, which is cute. It's a cute looking game. Cause look at this mouse. He's got a little shirt, a little jacket, with and some little sneakers in a game called Sneakers. They gotta sneak around. They gotta get cheese from those from some pesky rats. Yeah, that pesky rat and that pesky rat. But um, oh, and also this game was originally a Toys R Us exclusive, so that. That just tells you that this is going to be valuable at some point because Toys R Us is going under. But from the back, you see, heroes come in all sizes. I mean, look at the look at this. Look how cute all the characters look. I mean, I, I mean, already you can tell I like the graphic style of the, like the art style of the game. It's cute, but um, gameplay wise, it's kind of like a, a scavenger hunt where you basically have to uh, find your mouse friends. No, not your mouse friends. Uh, those pesky rats. And get your cheese, get some cheese. That I mean, it's it's simple because it's a kids game. I mean, I haven't played it uh, the, um, since I got it, so I want to get back into it just to see how it is. Cause it's cause that that'd be cool to see like a Toys R Us exclusive game. All right, the next is ATV Quad Power Racing Two, Two. And yeah, it's it's basically like what you what you would think. ATV quad power racing for next generation. That's it. And then the last the last game in the first pile is X Men Legends, which is actually a pretty good um uh, superhero game. But beat him up. Hey, look, my feet. And you be you can be a bunch of X Men characters, which why would you not want want that in an X Men game? You gotta go up against Magneto, who looks like hmm. Just giving that stern look, like hmm. <laughs> like he doesn't care about anything. And then alone, you are mighty. Together, you are legends. Because look at all these guys. Look at all the X Men. Wolverine down here, I think. Uh, Storm. Uh, can't, can't tell who that is. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not familiar with the X Men at all, but. But what's cool that's in here is that, um, I picked out the manual. There's some cards in here. There's one for Mutant, uh, Exa for Xavier School, which says the dates from when these were, these were uh, 1993. And there's a Mystique card from, uh, 1994. And then, what's this? A Rogue card, which is, was 1997. I mean, th those were just in there when I got the game, so I don't know. And then, yeah, just try it out. It's a pretty good RPG, like slash beat 'em up. All right, now moving on to the second pile. If the camera can so gladly focus, there we go. All right, second pile. Pac-Man World Two. This game I also have in the PS2, but I kind of I prefer the Xbox version probably because I have had this version i mean I, and my ps2 version works but i don't know it's really good it's really good um pac-man 
Pac-Man game. Or a good, that's a pretty good platformer. I mean, to me, I kind of... Uh, in my opinion, I prefer the first Pac-Man world because, I don't know, it's... Um, it's more, it's simpler. It's more pick up and play type of thing. Well, it's more simpler. And even then, this is pretty good, um, platform, 3D platform, right? Like, you, I get it on, like, whatever system you can get it, you can get it on. Because that's a really good platformer. Alright, then next is Blood Wake. And uh, all I can tell you about this game is that you fight with boats. Yes. Twisted Metal on the water. That sounds awesome, cause look at this boat right here with its get with its guns like. Brrrr. I mean, come on! Why would you not want to play a game where you fight with boats? I mean, come on! That's all I have to say about Bloodwig. All right, and the next is Metal Gear Solid Two Substance. This game is basically a port of Sons of Liberty from the PS2 and that's it it just has some extra stuff in the game I played the game a, a good amount it's just uh, I'm stuck on the I think the middle of the story cuz I don't know I had to get back into the game again backlog like but if you but if you can't find a copy of Sons of Liberty which it should be pretty easy to find a copy of Metal Gear Solid 2 in the PS2 Let's get the Xbox version because it's pretty cheap. Alright, the next is Oddworld Munch's Odyssey and Oddworld Stranger's Wrath. And now, since these two are completely different games, let's start with Munch's, Munch's Odyssey. Munch's Odyssey was probably the big launch title for the original Xbox aside from Halo. But it's, this is a pretty good, um, pretty good game. Now... I've, I think it's kind of underrated because not a lot of people like Munch's Odyssey that much because it's not, uh, it doesn't have the uh, the clever puzzles from the PS1 games. Uh, it's a 3D platformer now. Uh, it's a 3D puzzle game. Like, people will complain about every, uh, anything and everything, I swear to God. And yeah, it's a pretty good game. Like Graphically, the game looks really good for original Xbox game and it actually... It actually holds up pretty well today, and that's kind of and that's kind of weird because usually the original Xbox games don't look so great now, but this game actually looks pretty good. And then going on to Stranger's Wrath, which for some reason EA's dumb logo is on is on the case. And so even ignoring that, because if they still had this franchise, they would kill it. Um, Stranger's Wrath is obviously completely different because you got the Wild West setting. And you're this guy named Stranger who basically goes around getting bounty, getting uh, bounties for for cr for criminals that he catches, and that's awesome. Why would you not want to play a Stranger? His name is Stranger for God's sake. I mean, come on! Like you should get either one of those games. All right, the next is Madagascar, which I didn't. <laughs> this game was really cheap, and that's why I got it. But, um, all right, I, could, I can tell you right now, um, not all of my games are complete. Like, right here. I have no manual for this game. But, yeah. Um, Madagascar, it's basically, it's a pretty generic 3D platformer. And, I don't know. I just, uh, was it? I think there's a mini golf mode somewhere in the game. It's just, I haven't got that far to prove it. I think, there, I think there is a mini golf mode, but I want to play some more of the actual game first. Alright, the next is Dead to Rights. And there's some hair, there's some, some dog hair on that. Yeah, Dead to Rights. I mean, look at the cover. You got this guy and his gun. It's Dead to Rights. But you know what makes this even more co more awesome? You flip it to the back, you get to see the dog. Yeah! Because you're cause your guy is a cop. And you guys, your police dog, yeah, your canine partner, Shadow. Shadow Light Edgehog. Ha ha ha! No. And, yeah. Uh, it, it's a pretty, um, so far it's a pretty fun, um, third-person shooter. With, um, your guy. Um, I don't know that much about the story in the game, but the story isn't really what matters in this game. It's about the get. it's about that gameplay. Alright, the next is... 
The Simpsons Road Rage, which is Crazy Taxi, with Simpsons characters. That's pretty much all I can describe this game for you. I think this game was also a launch title for the original Xbox, but again, I could be wrong. But yeah, if you like Crazy Taxi, you're probably going to like this game as well, because I, cause I like Crazy Taxi. And, fun fact, did you know that uh, Sega sued EA over, over, over Simpsons Road Rage because the game was so similar to Crazy Taxi? Yeah, the more you know. I'm guessing some people probably knew that, but hey, I'm sorry if you already knew that. And saying, we already knew that! I'm sorry, I can't please everyone. Alright, the next is Splinter Cell. Splinter Cell Pandora Tomorrow. And Splinter Cell Chaos Theory, Limited Collector's Edition. Yeah, I have the I have the Splinter Cell trilogy. I have Double Agent on the GameCube, but this is where it's at. The the Xbox with the Splinter Cell games. But Splinter Cell, like, it seems like a really cool stealth game. Is that I haven't gotten that far into it. I mean, and Sam Fisher's a boss. And Pandora Tomorrow, I pro I feel like I would probably like this more. I mean, you looking at the cover, it looks like it. It looks like it. And then Chaos Theory, I mostly got this because this was a cheap uh, collector's edition, and it even has the original um, uh, fifty nine ninety nine price tag from movie gal from movie gallery. But yeah, it's just, it's a really nice looking steel book with uh, Sam Fisher's goggles. On it. And, and there's two discs in there if you ever want to get I like if I um I don't know which game to recommend you because um if I were to if I were to say I'd say start with maybe Pandora tomorrow but like just get any of them it's a great series all right the next is Big Bumpin which is the second out of the three Burger King games and I think this is the only one I've played. Uh, this one is basically like air hockey. <laughs> it's just you got this weird guy, the Burger King, and wh <laughs> whatever that is, <laughs> a demented chicken, I can tell you that. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh boy. That's how weird these Burger King games are. And again, just like uh, Pocket Bike Racer, both, both versions on the same disc. And yeah, it's air hockey. <laughs> It's basically air hockey, but you get to play with the Burger King. Alright, the next is Enclave, which is a, a, a an action game. Um, a beat-em-up, like, action game. And it's actually not that bad, to be completely honest. I mean, I haven't, again, I haven't played that much of it, but it seems cool for, for, for I don't know, because I think, I don't know how much I've played of it, but look at this, because you get to choose your path, you get... Um, whatever other game I was talking about with, oh yeah, Fable, I think, um, it, uh, you, you could be, choose your path, Warrior of the Light or Minion of the Dark, with 12 characters that you could pick from, with, and you get to fight cool looking demons, cause it's called Enclave, and when you're looking at the, the cover, it's a skull, come on, cause you get to destroy, destroy with hand to hand combat, so it's an action game, and it's not that, it's, it's, not bad. And, uh, Quantum Redshift, which is a uh, high-speed racing game like Extreme G, F Zero, and Fast RMX. And it's it's basically like those games. If you like F Zero or if you like, like any of those games that I just mentioned, you're definitely gonna like this game. Yeah, I I don't know. I I haven't played it that much, so again, backlog. Alright, next is Nightcaster Defeat the Darkness. <laughs> Let me just look into this guy like, ah, I gotta use my spell! Ah! And then you got this guy like, what are you doing? Why are you using that spell? I gotta fly. No, it's just a scratch from the case. But, um, Nightcaster. It's basically like an, an RPG, I think. Because you got spells, and you got fantasy setting. With this guy, camera can focus. With that nice <laughs> tattoo. I mean, I need <laughs> again. I need to play some more of the game. But judging from the game so far, it's pretty um, all right. So far, it's just I need to get back into some other games. And then NHL 2005. Who cares? 
and Need for Speed Underground, and Need for Speed Underground 2. Um, I played a little bit. I played like a very tiny bit of Underground 2 because that was given to me from a friend. And the first Underground I got from a yard, uh, that, a yard sale for a dollar, which that was a really good deal. But yeah. Um, I think these games are like open world Need for Speed games. Uh, the only other need, um, open world Need for Speed that I played is Undercover, and that's a pretty fun game. But Underground Two seems fun. But I played more of the demo of Burnout Three Takedown on that's on the disc more than the game itself. For some stupid reason. Uh, um, another copy of Mojo. It's just that this this one doesn't work, and uh, there's no manual. Alright, the next is Amped, which is a snowboarding game like SSX and some other games. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what else to say. I really, I really don't know what to say because I haven't really played played the game at all. Cause I, I really, I, cause I love the first SSX. It's just that game seems to be a lot like the first SSX. It's just that the controls aren't as tight as in SSX. Because that's important for an extreme sports game. Alright, the next is Jade Empire Limited Edition. This is a really cheap limited edition, by the way. Like, I'm surprised of limited editions, but... Jade Empire. Uh, this was actually my first Bioware game. And this isn't the, first, the last time you're going to see Bioware. But, um... This game is better than Mass Effect Andromeda, I can tell you that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right, see right here from the developer of the 2003 game of the year. We'll get to that. But yeah, Jade Empire. It's it's a it's a cool RPG. Like just being able to pick your character, do martial arts combat, and do stuff they probably wouldn't do in other RPGs because it's in China. And the reason why this is li uh, why it's so limited is well, probably not, but. Here's, so here's the disc for the game, and then behind the manual is this for some weird reason, and then flipping the disc is the limited edition bonus content, which has some Monk DLC on it, and I think the actual disc for Jade Empire has a demo of Conquer Live and Reloaded on it, but it's just I don't know how to access it because it keeps telling me about the parental controls, and I don't know how to get that thing to stop. Uh, then the only dual pack I have, which is Star Wars Clone Wars and Tetris Worlds. The only dual pack, like I just said. Uh, Clone Wars is, is a pretty decent flying game. Flying game and, like, um, uh, beat em up. But I prefer, I kind of prefer, uh, uh, first Starfighter. Wherever it is. Oh, it's up there. Yeah, Clone Wars is pretty good. And Tetris Worlds is Tetris. It's definitely that. It's... For sure, Tetris. Yeah. And and Paul had this. I'm sorry, Paul. I now have your copy of Tetris Worlds and Star Wars Clone Wars. And they're both on the same disc. With two separate manuals. Yeah. I have nothing to say about Tetris Worlds. But Clone Wars is a pretty decent flying game. Where you get to do flying combat and, and uh, tank combat and hand-to-hand -hand combat. Alright, the next is Midway Arcade Treasures 2 and Midway Arcade Treasures 3. Now these these Midway Arcade Treasures games, like these are cool little arcade compilations. Like if you're if you're big into like games by Midway or classic arcade games, go for this one. If you're into like racing games, then like Midway racing games then just go for this one. Uh, let me flip these over to see um uh what games are on what what games are on these discs? Because I'm not going to go over them because that will just take too long. My favorite ones on um, Arcade Treasures 2 are Gauntlet 2 and Rampage World Tour, which I, ha which I have on the PS1. And then my favorite... Uh, I haven't, the only game I've played on this is Hydro Thunder. I think next I'm going to try um, San Francisco Rush 20 2049. But, again, try these out if you're... If you're um, Big in um, arcade, like classic arcade games or Midway or game uh, racing games by Midway. Like basically stuff by Midway. 
Alright, the next is Fantastic Four, another superhero game. And already I can tell you, X-Men Legends is better. Because there's more characters to pick from, from X-Men Legends, and I've actually beaten this game. It's really not that long of a game, and it's not that hard of a game. I mean, maybe it's because I played on easy, I have no idea. Because, but everyone's here. Uh, Reed Richards, Sue Storm, uh, Ben Grimm, and Johnny Storm. Mr. Fantastic, Invisible Woman, Thing, and, and Human Torch. But you already know that. Because you get to harness the power of, the, of four. Hey, look, my feet. And what else? Uh, yeah, it's basically like a, a kind of a watered-down version of X-Men Legends. Who was beeping? And yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, you can you can kind of try it out if you're again to, if you don't have X-Men Legends, but you just or if you're big into Fantastic Four, I wouldn't blame you. All right, and the next is. Uh, well, the last game in the second pile is Worms Forts Under Siege. Now, the, I haven't played much of this game. I've played the tutorial of it, and so far it seems like uh, pretty fun. I've Because this is my first Worms game. but And it's published by Sega, which is weird. But yeah, it looks like a very fun cartoony like, artillery combat strategy game, if that makes any sense. Because you get to... Uh, Create a castle, and guard the castle, and blow up the other worms, and name them all kinds of wacky stuff, because this is worms. It's, it's wacky weapons and wacky situations. Everything wacky. I'd, um, hold on. Hold on for a second. Okay, now let's move on to the last pile. So, starting with the, with the, the third and final pile, and it's Dead or Alive 3, which I think is the only fighting game I have for the original Xbox. Which, uh, I don't know. It's another launch title for the original Xbox. With this guy, I forgot his name. His name's in the manual for some reason. But, right, camera, focus. There we go. Yeah, it just seems like a fighting game with... Well, you'd have to be dead or alive, which isn't shocking at all. Ha! Ha ha! No. And yeah, it's dead or alive. It's dead or alive before dead or alive was... Uh, what's it? Phallic. <laughs> I'm sorry. Bad. Dead or Alive 3, um, I guess you could try it out if you're into Dead or Alive, but I'm not that big into fighting games, so... Or Dead or Alive. <laughs> and then here's a game that I am kind of into, and that's Loons, The Fight for Fame. Now this is a hidden gem right here. This is a really fun Looney Tunes, really fun Looney Tunes game. It's basically a 3D fighting game. Like, um... Uh, Power Stone for the Dreamcast. It's basically like that, but with Looney Tunes characters and uh, movie and movie sets, based on like classic movies, like Indiana Jones, Mission Impossible. Um, I think even Monty Python. <laughs> I could be wrong about that, but because it's my Monty Python. Uh, what else? Star Wars probably. Uh, Galaxy Quest, and a lot of other games. But another thing, it was rated E. For mild violence and camera focus and violence. What difference does that make? I don't know. But this was a recommendation from a friend, so that's why I got Loons of Fight for Fame. And it's a really fun 3D fighting game. That's a hidden gem. I can tell you that. I get I get it. Alright, the next is Project Snowblind, which I haven't played that much. It's a first person shooter. Where you play as this guy. And you basically have to stop a evil guy. I don't know his name. From using electromagnetic, I think, bombs to cause a cause a worldwide blackout, I think. Which that's a cool setup for a story. And yeah, that's really all I, I that's really all I have to say about Project Snowblind. I wanna play the game some more for sure. Alright, and then next is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2X. Tony Hawk's Project 8. And Tony Hawk's Underground 2. Yeah, the Tony Hawk games. I don't have all of them, but I have a, have like the, the some pretty good ones. Like I got 2X, which is a launch title for the original Xbox, and it's just a port of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 and 1, I think. Project 8, I haven't played, and I haven't played 2X, because 2X I got at a yard sale for a dollar. Again, really good deal. 
Uh, Project 8, um, I haven't played this uh, either, but I have played Underground 2. And let me tell you guys something. I suck at the Tony Hawk games. I, I can tell you right now. If you, tr if you just watch me play Tony Hawk, you're like, uh, Why? Why do you suck so bad? It, it's because I haven't practiced at the games. There's, but they are fun, extreme sports games, or sports games in general. Along with SSX, they're the like the best uh, ex like sports games to play. But uh, the only one I have played is Underground Two. I've played the uh, GameCube ones. I've um, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Three and Four on the GameCube, but like just get any of these games into if you ever want to get into um, extreme sports games. That or the um, SSX. Just just get them. They're amazing games. Before. Uh, the series, the series went way down the drain, and now it's dead. All right, the next is Doctor Muto, which this game is actually pretty uncommon. I don't think I've ever found this game. I don't this. I don't see this game that that much. But basically, it's a three D platformer where you play as this mad doctor who must uh, who has destroyed the world and now has to rebuild the world by going to other planets and being various types of animals. To traverse the world. Because, like, right here, you can see an ape, a rat, uh, you, you're not that thing, and whatever else is on here. I don't know, the only thing is anything else. But it's pretty, pretty good 3D platformer. Like, there's a bunch of stuff to do. It's made by Midway, so you probably have, it's probably a good sign. But yeah, Dr. Mu Dr. Muto, um, I played a good, a, a good chunk of the game, but, yeah. It's a pretty good um, 3D platformer. I mean, it's not the best 3D platformer in, for the sixth generation of consoles, but hey, it's a it's a pretty fine 3D platformer. All right, the next, whew, the PC Master Race is going to kill me for this next one, Half Life Two. Please don't come after me, PC Master Race. Leave me alone, please. Yeah, Half Life Two. This game just speaks for itself. Like, really. What is there to say about Half-Life 2 that hasn't been said already? You know, it's a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece of first-person shooters and physics. Like, it's a masterpiece. And I've played, I, was, I have played a little bit of the game, so that just proves I am playing a masterpiece. But I don't say, I don't, I don't know if I could say it's, a, it's as amazing as everyone says it is just yet. Because, like, the Xbox version's full of, um, what's it, loading screens. I'm guessing the PC version probably doesn't have that. So, yeah. And then, MVP, MVP Baseball 2005. Who cares? And then, 007, Agent Under Fire. And 007 from Russia with Love. Along with GoldenEye Rogue Agent. Yeah, I got three 007 games. These are, these are really fun. I mean, EA, before EA went to QAP... They put out some pretty good stuff, like um, the 007 games. Like after, where after Nintendo was done with them, they put out some good, some pretty good ones. Agent Under Fire is pretty good, but the controls are kind of weird because, because with the left analog stick you only move up and down, and the right analog stick is left and right movement, which is really awkward. And for Russia with Love is my favorite out of the, out of these three because I don't know, it's a simple third person shooter fun. Agent Under Fire and GoldenEye, Rogue Agent are first person, and From Russia with Love's third, third person. But Rogue, Rogue Agent is okay. I mean, the controls are really stiff, and I don't know. I haven't played much of these games, but From Russia with Love is the one I would definitely recommend. I mean, I haven't played GoldenEye 007 on the N64, because I don't have an N64. But just get these games. Get, get From Russia with Love, because that's, that's the best one out of the three that I've played so far. Just do it. Alright, and then next is... Hey, look, my feet. It's not my feet, but it's Lego Star Wars. Yeah, now, this is like a modern classic right here. I mean, sort of. A like semi-modern classic because it's the Lego game that made the Lego games big. And it made the, the prequels good. Through visual storytelling. Yeah! It makes Jar Jar less annoying, I can tell you that. And luckily, he's not in the front. But yeah, Lego Star Wars. This this is such a great Lego game. If you were to 
Well, I get well, I could recommend any of the Lego games to start off with, but this I'd probably say you could start with this one. Cause this one is is just great. It's a great Lego game. Alright then Torino two thousand six. Stop laughing. I have Torino two thousand six. I mean, the game isn't really the best Olympics game you can get. I pref I prefer I honestly prefer the um, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games games because there's more stuff in those games and you get to play as Mario and Sonic characters. All right, and then the last out of the three Burger King games, Sneak King. I mean, just looking at the title, it looks like it it doesn't deserve that E rating. I can tell you that because just look at this cover. You got the Burger King silhouette. It's like. I'm coming for a Whopper. <laughs> and then, <laughs> yeah. And then on the back, the majestic master of sneak invites you to go behind the mask. Ugh! That, that sounds messed up. And then, <laughs> see? Like, you want this Whopper, buddy? I'll give you this Whopper for free. And yeah. And if you hear something in the background, this is one of my dogs. And then, hey, look, my feet again. And then inside here, there's actually some more stuff. I got to give the gift of beef and then this Xbox 3 Xbox Live trial for the 360 but that's expired for sure. I don't know. I haven't played Sneak King but from what I can gather from gameplay that I've seen online, it's weird. It's really weird. All right, the next is Ghost Recon is Ghost Recon Island Thunder, which is the only thing I have related to the first Ghost Recon cuz I have the original on the GameCube and I have this on the original Xbox, obviously, and I think this is also on PC. And then I have the second expansion, Jungle Storm, on the PS2. Because it was only on the PS2. Now, why Ubisoft decided to do that, I have no idea. Like, make make the original multi multi-platform. This original Xbox exclusive, and I think PC. And then jung the second expansion... Uh, was... God, I can't speak. Uh, <laughs> PS2 exclusive. Uh, Island Thunder, I could say right now with the Ghost Recon games, like I said with, um, I think Brute Force at the beginning of this video, I suck at squad-based shooters. Like, I suck at them. I haven't even got past the first mission in this game. And that, that just tells you something, that I suck at these games. So that, that's, that's something I, again, I recommend Brute Force. Yeah, it's like Babies vs. Ghost Recon. And then speaking of more Ghost Recon, I got Ghost Recon 2 and Ghost Recon 2. Again, but it's Summit Strike. Yeah, Ghost Recon 2. Um, I don't, there's really not that much different with Ghost Recon 2 compared to Highland Thunder, but these games are hard as balls. But even on the easiest difficulty, the game is still hard as balls for both of them. I still have not gotten past the first mission on either one of these. So again, that just shows you how much I suck at Ghost Recon. Right, and then another copy of Midway Arcade Treasures 2. It says, this one I got from a friend, but the, there's no manual. And the disc looks like, it looks disgusting. I don't know if you could see it, but it's pretty disgusting. Hey, look, there's the camera. Alright, and then next is Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Now, this game I just got recently for a dollar. And yeah, and Platinum Hits, I don't really care that it's Platinum Hits if I got it for a dollar. But yeah, Knights of the Old Republic. I have not played this game yet, because like I said, I just got it recently, so... Haven't played it at all, but... Really, Cars! But, it's this is one of the highlights of the original Xbox's library. A Star Wars game. A Star Wars RPG by Bioware. This is this is one of the best Star Wars games, really. But I haven't played the game to prove it, so I don't know. Don't take my word for it until I play the game for myself. All right, the next is SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom, along with the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. Yeah, some SpongeBob games. Let's start with Battle for Bikini Bottom first. This is a really good license game. A really good. License game. It's one of the best ones for sure. And same with the movie. I think the movie is probably a better license game. But Battle for Bikini Bottom is a really good 3D platformer. It's That's basically like uh, Mario 64 or Banjo-Kazooie. I don't know. <laughs> that's what everyone else says. 
But I've actually beaten this game. Like, oh my god! <laughs> and then the movie, and then the movie game, I, I, like, if, if you're a fan of, of Spongebob, you're definitely gonna like these games. Because this one has some pretty good Spongebob fan service, like this King Neptune in the game, and um, King Jellyfish, but unfortunately he doesn't put on football gear, like in the show, but... Uh, the movie and the movie game actually follows the movie pretty well. I mean, maybe some, probably a few things are made up are made up for the sake of being, you know, a game. But yeah, get the get these games if you're a bit if you're like three D platformers or if you're like SpongeBob, like I do. Ah, sorry, my finger got in the way. All right, then we're coming down the wire. Uh, we got Dark Summit, which is a snowboarding game. It's like SSX, and this game. Is basically, like I said, like SSX. I think this game is another launch title for the original Xbox, but it's pretty cool. Like just like it's like SSX, it's just the controls aren't as tight as they are in SSX. But still, I'd re I'd recommend this game. This is this is a pretty good snowboarding game. All right, and then next is Mech Assault and Mech Assault Two: Lone Wolf. So yeah. Uh, the Mech Assault games. Um, Mech Assault 1 was the first original Xbox game that I got. And be probably because of that, there's no manual. But it has this Xbox Live um, stuff in it. Like, hey, look, Xbox Live is coming. And it also had this um, Xbox Game of the Year sticker from 2002 by GameSpot. And then uh, Mech Assault 2. I don't have the limited edition for some stupid reason because that's really cheap. Yeah, Mech Assault, though, both these games are pretty cool, uh, mech, mech games. Mech, like, walking around as a mech, just stomping down evil soldiers and taking down other mechs. And, yeah, these games are pretty good. Like, the biggest problem with the original Mech Assault is that uh, the check po uh, there's no checkpoints in the levels. Like, if you die, like, near the end of the mission, you go back to all the way to the beginning, which, which in Mech Assault 2 is completely fixed. But, yeah. Like, I mean, just looking at the cover of the first Mech Assault, it looks awesome. Because you got a mech that's ready to uh, stomp down some evil bad guys. Like, evil guys. I mean, come on. It's mechs. Who doesn't love mechs? Alright, then coming down to the last two games. We, and second to last game is Sudeki, which is an action RPG. And it's actually a pretty good action RPG. I mean, story-wise, it's not the best story in an RPG, but, like, the game has some pretty fun combat, and, because uh, you got, um, hand-to-hand -hand combat, and you got ranged combat, because then you got, um, these two for range, and then these, these two right here for, uh, hand-to-hand -hand combat, and I did not get it for this fan service, because I'm not a weirdo. But yeah, Sudeki is probably one of the better action RPGs on the system. I mean, like I said, I haven't played Knights of the Old Republic, which is probably the best one. Hey, look, my feet. Um, yeah. Well done. Okay, sorry about that. But yeah, Sudeki is probably one of the better um, RPGs on the original Xbox. Because, to be honest, the original Xbox doesn't have a lot of RPGs. Like, exclus exclusive RPGs. But, you should get this one. That's some... Um, Pretty fun combat in it, but like story-wise, and it's not the best, and voice acting-wise, it's okay. All right, and then the last original Xbox game that I have is Blake's the Time Sweeper. <laughs> this is this for sure is one of my favorite. This uh, my favorite original Xbox game so far, which is kind of weird to say that. Like this and Sudeki are so far my favorite games on the original Xbox, but. I think the reason why I like Blinks the Time Sweeper is it's time mechanics, and it was basically uh, Microsoft's answer to the um, Ratchet and Clank games and Mario. Like it's cool that, that that Microsoft tried to make a platformer for the Xbox. I mean, like they just say, "Hey, we need we need a plat we need a mascot, so let's just hire some studio to make uh, a platformer," and it turned out pretty good for the original Xbox. I mean, to be honest. I think this is a game is as good as Super Mario Sunshine. Now that I know is an extremely bold that's bold for me to say that. That's a bold claim. But this game, like for its mechanics, is pretty good. Like using using time to your advantage, like uh what's it say on the back? Um slow motion, pause, 
Uh, camera focus. There we go. Rewind, fast forward, and record. Like stuff you would want to do in a game in a platformer about time. Ah, ah, camera. And yeah, and you got a cat as you, as your um your protagonist. And you, aside from that stupid grin on his face, like just look at the Japanese um cover. It looks way better. But yeah, Blink's the Time Sweeper. That's my favorite original Xbox game. So yeah, that is all of my original Xbox games. Pretty healthy amount of original Xbox games, but that's what it is. And just let me get these games that you didn't care about anyway. Uh, that one, and there's one more back here. Yeah, <laughs> these games you don't care about. <laughs> so thank you all for wa So thank you all for watching the video, and please comment, like, and subscribe. And and next video is probably going to be my Switch collection, which is going to be my last collection for six, for for now. And then I'll probably get to do a uh, video on South Park, The Stick of Truth, or Skylanders. And yeah, so shock the world and us, Amiibros. Goodbye.